Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the SU-14-2. It's the Tier 8 Soviet SPG. It's located on the north spawn of Lakeville under the command of Yar Baz. Now this RT is actually getting rather popular just recently. A lot of players have been playing it. Um, it's actually quite slow because it's based on the T-35 heavy tank which was notoriously slow anyway and very badly designed. But uh, they built two of these beasts. Um, first they built them into the SU-14, then the SU-14-1, and then finally they turned it into the SU-14-2 by making it an enclosed RT. Now you see just knocked over that uh, tree. Not a good new normally because it actually gives away a wear position, but he's parking himself up and he's ready to go. This RT is also known as the school bus. Now he's armed with a 203mm B4 howitzer capable of doing 900 alpha and 52mm pen with 10.4m burst radius. He's trying to dine in there on the Lerva. I think he left that a little too late. Now ideally he needs to change position because the reload time is actually quite long. By the book it's 42.19 seconds. You can see Yabaz has got it down to 36.32. Now, I say the reason why he needs to change his firing position is mainly down to the fact that it's so easy to count a battery on Lakeville because there are relatively few positions that you can occupy in order to shoot directly up the valley. If the enemy works out where you are, they can count a battery you and take you out. Okay, BK-101P fires the round in. We don't know what damage that did. He's having a quick look. He ought to move. He's not moved, but the BK has lost some hit points, so maybe he did actually splash him. Now, you don't have to move too far. You just have to move far enough to actually avoid the return shell, just in case the enemy was watching at the time. Looks like his uh, teammates up there at the... Uh, at the bottleneck are actually getting hit by the enemy RT because they're showing stun. Okay. We're lined up on the VK at the moment. But I get the feeling that he wants to get that 252U. There are a couple of enemy tanks right at the back that he could get. But I think he wants these two first. Oh, we know where the enemy RT is now. He's just given away his position. He's actually the other side of the rock face, just behind the bushes. Okay, so we're trying to get this VK fully dialed in. Direct hit right in the front of the vehicle, 354. Now, the good news is that because the enemy RT has been spotted in that position, it's very difficult to counter battery on Yabaz's school bus because from that position, he can't shoot into this corner. He's actually blocked by the rocks. So he's not going to be shooting us, but we might be able to get shots on some of the enemy tanks down at this end. Especially that Scorpion G who keeps popping out, having a look, and then popping back in again. Okay, we're going to give it a go. Rounds out straight away. And he killed the Scorpion stone dead with one shot. A direct hit. Wiped the guy out completely. We don't know how many hit points he managed to get, but it certainly was a lot. That was almost certainly a penetrating shot. Penetrating round would do anywhere up to plus or minus 25% of 900. So he could have done the full 1,150. Okay, he's moved over to a new firing position. There's another reason for him to go over here, actually, is also the fact that the teammates on his team have actually failed to... Uh, capture the town in fact they lost the town to the enemy and the enemy's coming this way so they're gonna have to uh, try and defend and that means he's gonna have to move over but that also makes him pos potentially uh, he could be counter battery now the enemy have already lost their artists so that's not gonna happen and we just wiped out the object 252u on the enemy team who went to the back and took a hit Yes, the enemy arty was actually wiped out. Now, I suspect that may have been that somebody on our team managed to get to the other end, found the enemy arty, and took him out, possibly on the river road. Can't be certain, but I think that's what actually happened. I was paying attention to what uh, 
to what Yabaz was doing with his arty and not to what was going on in the background. Okay, we've got an enemy brass there being a bit of a pain. He's just the other side of the house. We've got our teammate just this side of the house. And we don't want to stun him, but we certainly do want to get shot on that Barask. That's out. Directly hit him in the face. It didn't damage our teammate, but he does go down anyway. And he went down to the Skoda T27. He went along the river road, or the lake road. So at least their Barras took a hit, and he took a big hit for 411. So pity it wasn't a penetrating shot. Probably hit the tracks. That's probably why it didn't go through. Okay, so got two enemy tanks coming in from the town. The Bisonte C-45, the SMV CC-67. He's almost loaded. Fires in and gets a direct hit on the Bisonte straight away. The enemy Barask is now down to one hit point. So a splash will be enough to take him out of the game. Well, the enemy was momentarily in the cap area, and that Basante is down to his last few hit points. So I suspect that uh, that Yabaz did get a big hit on that guy. Okay, and we also know that that Barras keeps looking around the corner. Can he get these two? Oh my god, they're together and they've got low hit points. We're almost loaded. This could be a massive shot. Oh, we got both of them. That's a bombardier. He took out the Panther 2 and the Barras with one shot. But now we've got an enemy Skoda. Oh, he's just gone. Well, the good news is there's five left on either team. Now, our guys are blocked in at the bottleneck. But uh, if we go around the corner, we might be able to get shots on that charioteer up at the, um, at the top of the map. And there's a Lurva up there as well. Okay, we're going to go for the Lurva. We're loaded. Oh, he's gone. Okay, well, there's a 122TM there now. In fact, the enemy charioteer did go down, so... Oh, we just hit the wreck. Unfortunate there. We accidentally hit the wreck, but now the enemy are to just three tanks left. We might be able to get one or two more shots on the enemy. Just one, maybe, I think. The enemy is in the cap area, but he's fighting it out with one of our teammates. And we're now going for the 122TM. He's just the other side of the bottleneck. Come on, get this shot on target. Don't want to hit the wreck. Okay, we're loaded. Rounds out straight away. And it's a kill shot. The 122TM goes down. And that marks the fifth kill by Yabaz in this game. He's killed one third of the enemy team. And there's now only one enemy left. It's the ELC Ever 90. He's done a fantastic job. He has been whittling away the enemy. Of course, getting two kills with one shot. Taking out the Panther 2 and the Barras with one round. And basically, he's turned the battle around for the team. Now, he didn't do it alone because he did have some teammates with him who were helping. And they are down to their last few hit points. But uh, Yabaz is still alive, still in the game. And if he can get that last kill, he will get a top gun as well. Now, it is an ELC Evan 90. They are notoriously difficult to spot when they're hiding. The ELC was last seen on the Lake Road. And the reason Yabaz is headed off to the east is that if that ELC has actually gone over the edge... And he's actually hiding. And he, and the Caliban just took a hit. Somebody just fired at the Caliban. Okay, if that ELC... He is in the water area. It looks like he's trapped. We can get a kill shot. Come on. Dialing in. Rounds out. Oh, he gets him. That's a top gun. And wins the game by Yabaz in the SU-14-2. Very well played. That was an excellent game by Yabaz in the SU-14-2. Even when the enemy were only a few meters away, just around the other side of the rock, he kept his cool and kept fighting. He got a first-class tanker out of that game, as well as a bombardier for taking out two tanks with one shot, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 14. 
He also got a brothers in arms because he actually platooned with one of his teammates in the game and he got a top gun for getting at least six kills. His win eight, 4,346, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game because that went to the BZ176 who got 3,811 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to the Ho-Ri-2, his platoon mate in this one. He got 3,000. 217 hit points in second place and in third place was the Varask on the enemy team with 2918 and in fourth place we've got Yabaz with 2862. When it came to kills Yabaz got that one six kills to him four kills went to his platoon mate so they killed two-thirds of the enemy team between them and three kills went to the Skoda T27 and the 122 TM on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, it was the BZ176 who did the best with 1,336, with 1,111 going to the Ho-Ri-2 and 1,024 going to Yabaz. And they were the only three players who managed to get over 1,000 base in the game, with the next highest scorer being the Vipera at 783. He fired 11 rounds in the game. Very small number of rounds to get a very big effect. Seven direct hits on the enemy, two penetrating shots. Well, we know one of them must have been that Scorpion. He hit that guy really hard. 431 hit points of damage. It was a penetrating shot. And the other one was the ILC-790. He took 658 hit points of him. Uh, and he wasn't even fully dialed in when he fired. But he had to get that shot in as quickly as he could if he wanted to get the top gun. Because his teammate was eyeing up that last kill and thinking, yes, I can have that. Um, but no, nope, it's not going to go to him. It's going to go to Yabaz instead. He also managed to get 10 splashes in the game. Remarkable, considering he only fired 11 shots. But yes, he did kill two enemy tanks with one shot. 2,862 hit points of damage, of which 2,116 were at more than 300 meters. Yes, some of those enemy were really close when he hit them. He damaged nine of the enemy, killed six, and he got four stuns in the game, but no stun assist whatsoever. He did pick up 17,539 credits in the battle and 6,144 XP. Uh, I suppose, really, the fun bit about that battle was the Bombardier that he took out two very dangerous tanks, the Panther II and, of course, the Barask, with just one round, and they were just sitting there waiting for it. Uh, and he just completed his load, fired the round in, and then killed two enemy vehicles. Uh, so that must have been very, very satisfying indeed. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.